Hello, Young Road here, and welcome to my channel. Well, today I'm actually going to talk about what it's been like to have owned my GTR for a year. I can't believe a year's gone that quick. It's quite scary. But, uh, yeah, stay tuned, watch the intro. Okay, so let's uh, back on to GTR ownership after one year. Agility. Now, end of the day, it's agile enough. It does what I want it to do. But it's not the sort of thing which is designed for throwing into bends. The ZZR, I would say, was a little bit more agile. But likewise, the the ZR would not have been as agile as an R1, you know. It depends what the bike has been designed and built for. You know, this bike's been built to go touring on. You know, to go across Germany, France or wherever. Across the other side of the pond, it's designed to go across states. And it will do this touring with a tremendous amount of power and speed you know more than enough to get you many many points a van or to have a, a load of police cars chasing you you know so it is very fast it's very powerful but at the end of the day it's designed for touring but uh, when you want power you have more than enough of it that weren't even uh, trying you know just like myself the bike hasn't lost any weight this year um, so it's still a heavy beast but when you're riding it the weight seems to feel a hell of a lot less yeah, of course, you need to pay a bit of attention to where you park it. Oh yeah, I have parked it front end in on the slope. I had a bike meet, funnily enough, and then trying to sit on the bike and push the bike backwards. With a smile on my face, you know, just trying to look that I'm not struggling at all. So now, I always make sure I park in rear end first, so at least I have the luxury of just riding out of the slope. Another parking issue is the side stand. I seem to have trouble getting my left boot onto the stand when sitting on the bike. That's probably due to my size 14 boots that I wear. So I need to purchase one of these side stand hooks which fits to it and it should just make it easier to get my heel onto it to drop the side stand. I mean this was the cause of me dropping the bike on my drive a while ago. Um, I did a video on that. Another minor problem, well it, it's been a minor problem for me anyway, is the ignition switch. Now yeah, you know what, I can see the advantages of keyless ignition. But not if you get off the bike and leave it on. I've now done this twice. The first time, some bloke did a good deed for the day and managed to push start me. But sadly he fell over when the bike started. The second time it happened, I did this at the Christmas toy run. But this time the battery was so flat, even two of Grantham's finest fit police officers could not get me going. And that was pushing it down in on the car park. So, you know, no, no alternative time to wait for the RAC, who then jump started it with a power pack. However, if I make sure I put the steering lock on, you know, that will probably get me into the habit of turning it off. Note to self, I'm going to get one of these small lithium power packs. And keep it on the bike just in case I have a numpty moment and do this again. There is something to be said about the old style key. You just put in the ignition, turn it, and then when you stop it, you turn it off and just take it out. As I uh, mentioned in the six month video, it's the same engine. It's absolutely bulletproof. It's the same power plant that comes 
out of the ZZR. It's just really been detuned and it has a better mid-range suited for touring. But make no mistake, these bikes are still very fast with more power than anyone really needs. The engine gives about the same fuel consumption as the ZZR and runs okay on both of the unleaded fuels. I tend to just mix between the two a little bit. It's also been a year since I've had the filthy job of cleaning and re-lubing the chain. The shaft drive is just a, a joy to behold in my book. It was okay when you're at home, I just basically get the ABBA stand, lift the back end of the rear to clean and lube the chain on the ZZR. It was a pain, you know. Even more of a pain to do it when you were away, as it was a case to sort of push the bike a few inches forward, spray it and then so on and so on. Too much hassle really for me. So most of the time I just didn't bother to do it that much. I've had a sneaky look at the Honda NT1100. I was impressed by the stats and the features, including the weight, but it is a fair drop down in horsepower to what I'm used to. But you know, here again, it should still be okay. But when I saw that shiny chain instead of a shaft, I thought to myself, you know, come on Honda, what are you playing at? It's a turret bike. Stick a shaft on it. It may appeal to more riders. The bike has no cruise control as standard. But that don't really bother me in the slightest. It's got one of those aftermarket ones fitted, but I never use it. I must admit, I don't even use the one in the car either. Now I know bike looks are down to a personal opinion. And everyone's opinion is slightly different, I can appreciate that. But yeah, I actually do like the look of the GTR. I have to admit though, if I had to choose between the GTR and the ZZR, fractionally, I like the looks of the ZZR slightly more, but it's certainly not a deal breaker. I was actually quite surprised that my stepson, who is in his early 30s, prefers the look of the GTR. Now, obviously because of his age, and I thought he would be in the opposite. I find the uh, luggage system is better than it was on the ZZR. On the ZZR, uh, I had a Gibby rack with a V35 side cases, which worked well on my Gen 1. However, there is no rack for the Gen 2, so I had to adapt the rack from my Gen 1 to make it fit. Both Gibby and Kawasaki actually do not recommend a rigid 3K system for the ZZR. They recommend the semi-rigid side cases and the top box. I must admit, I have seen some ZZRs with a full rigid system, all three cases, but when you sort of speak to the owners, they all mention they, or a friend, had fabricated a custom rack, you know, so they could do this. The GTR has the advantage of its own panniers. That worked very well indeed. We've actually got the soft inner cases as well, but we don't tend to use them. The top box works well as a backrest for the pillion, meaning they can sit upright or lean slightly back for support instead of having to lean forward. So it, it does increase the pillion comfort. The downside that is that if your pillion is not over tall, i.e. the wife, it's not as easy to mount and dismount the bike. We tend to get round this with the wife standing on the kerb before she actually gets onto the bike. The bike is still very stable with all the luggage fitted, but it will add more unwanted weight, obviously. But I tend to keep the top box on it all the time now, because it's just handy to store a helmet and carry camera equipment or anything else I need. Now, touching wood with my left hand on my desk and my right hand on my head, I have to admit this bike has been very, very reliable. It has not missed a beat. It seems to be built very well, just like a tank. Perhaps that's the reason, because of the weight of it. Yep, I've had to have had a new rear tyre, and I've booked it in for a new front tyre and the service. But that's the same for any of the bikes I've owned. So apart from the norm, it hasn't cost 
anything extra at all. You know, I've been on a tour around the Isle of Wight, I've been all around Dorset, I've been to Belgium, so and day trips out. So I've done a few miles on it, but uh, it's been absolutely spot on. I still haven't really made a decision about the screen, but I do like the look of the tinted one. I think it suits the bike, but you know, I may consider a change at some point. I've also not got round to trying a custom comfort or a gel seat as yet. I think we're going to do the next tour and then have a chat and see and then decide whether I need to change it or not. So to sum up, I found the GTR almost faultless. It's one hell of a bike. It will do everything that I want a bike to do and more. It's got power, speed, it's comfortable and very reliable. It sounds nice mainly due to the Acaprova NCAN. I also think they're a lot better looking than the standard one. Six months ago, I mentioned I would not swap back for a ZZR. But after 12 months, I can honestly say I wouldn't want to swap it for any other bike. Yeah, I have a wish list like most other bikers. There's other bikes I wouldn't mind owning. But there would all be extra bikes, you know. Um, but I would not get rid of this. Uh, this one is really a keeper. It's quite comforting to realise that I have all I need in the bike and it, it just stopped that quest for always looking for something better. Due to our emission laws, the latest one you can get in the UK is on a 2020 plate. But in America, they, they still have as a new bike and some insurance company did a poll amongst its customers and it was actually still voted the best touring bike available uh, and independently been tested still the most powerful fastest touring bike available in America. As I was so pleased with my ZZRs, it seemed the natural way to go to get the GTR for touring. But I mean, there are other bikes in the same sort of class I was looking at, the Yamaha uh, FJR 1300, and of course the Honda Pan European, similar sort of bikes, but I said, I decided on the GTR. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. If you're looking for a touring bike, yeah, you can do a hell of a lot worse than these. They're well built, they're bulletproof, they're reliable, fast and powerful, comfortable. So, not really much more you can say about them really. So, I hope you found this video interesting. If it's been any help to you, please do the tick, like and subscribe. And of course, as always, take care, ride safe and bye for now.